Good morning. Uh, I'm the fill-in for the fill-in for the fill-in. Um, Steve and Holly are not with us this morning. Uh, their middle son, Josh. No, Josh is right here. Noah. I'll be all right. Uh, their middle son, Noah, had emergency surgery this morning at 7 o'clock. Uh, he's doing well. We will add him to our prayers today. Uh, so happy that you're here this morning. Um, a few more every week. This is a good thing for all you younger folks that are going back to school. Sorry. Summer's over. Um, we precluded this morning the normal setup where we do the uh, introduction songs. Um, I have a couple announcements and then we'll get into 10,000 Reasons as our opener this morning. Um, a memorial service for Charlie, Charlie Jacobs will be held on Saturday, August 15th at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Because of COVID-19, we ask that all who attend properly social distance and wear a mask during the service. We also ask that if you are planning to attend, you RSVP the church office next week at 281-991-8600 so that they can have an idea of how many people are going to attend and we can get seating set up accordingly. Uh, in the back this morning, there are attendance cards. If you could fill one out, just put them in the plate. The offering will be done the same way. Please put the offerings in the plates at the back of the church. Um, emergency door fund. That plate is right in the middle, but we'll gladly take it in the other plate that's sitting off to the side. And last but not least, I want to give you an update on the call process. Uh, we had a meeting this morning. Um, we have narrowed it down. We currently have approximately four people that we plan on calling back in. There may be one or two others that, that we call, but right now there are four individuals that, that we plan on calling in for a second interview. Uh, we'll go from there. We'll give you more information when that process becomes a little more finalized. But I do want to let you know where we're at in that process. So with that being said, let's start. Please stand, join us if you would please. 10,000 reasons, thank you.
the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have begun our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us speak together the words of the Apostles' Creed regarding the first person of the Holy Trinity. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. What does this mean? I believe that God has made me and all creatures, that he has given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my reason and all my senses, and still takes care of them. He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, animals, and all I have. He richly and daily provides me with all that I need to support this body and life. He defends me against all danger and guards me and protects me from all evil. All this he does only out of fatherly, divine goodness and mercy, without any merit or worthiness in me. For all this, it is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. Let us humble ourselves before God, confess our sins to him, and ask his gracious forgiveness. We confess to God Almighty before the whole company of heaven and before one another that we are sinful human beings by nature and by deed. We have not always put God first. We have used his holy name in ways that do not honor him. We have not always been thoughtful caretakers of his creation and have not shared his bounty with others at all times. We have been heedless in word and deed and have not always kept our thoughts, words, and deeds pure and honorable. We sin in ways we know and in ways which we do not even recognize. We have wished for that which is not rightfully ours and have not put the best construction on all things and on all people. We pray God to have mercy on us, to forgive us all our sins, and to bring us to everlasting life. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and dispo dispose on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God of love, in his ministry, your son, Jesus, showed his mastery over all the forces, forces of nature, including those of great power. Help us to keep our eyes fixed on him and to trust his guidance in all things as we pass through this world, confident in his care, through the same Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Psalm of the Day. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. The cords of death encompassed me. The torrents of destruction assailed me. The cords of shore entangled me. The snares of death confronted me. From his temple he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his ears. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading is from Job chapter 38, verses 4 
through 18. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding, who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made clouds, its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band, and prescribed limits for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come, and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stayed. Have you commanded the morning since your days began, and caused the dawn to know its place, that it might hold of the skirts of the earth, and the wicked be shaken out of it? It is changed like clay under the seal, and its features stand out like a garment. From the wicked their light is withheld, and their uplifted arm is broken. Have you entered into the springs of the sea, or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been revealed to you, or have you seen the gates of deep darkness? Have you comprehended the expanse of the earth? Declare if you know all this. This is the word of God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 10, verses 5 through 17. <clears throat> For Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law, that the person who does the commandments shall live by them. But the righteousness based on faith says, do not stay in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down. Or, who will descend into the abyss? That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raises him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel this morning is from Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 33, and will serve as the basis of the sermon. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. 
But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. My text for today is Matthew 14, beginning with verse 28. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when Peter saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink, and he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is our text. My dear friends in Christ, there are very few things in our life of which we can be completely certain. Health, for example, is an uncertain thing. A sudden illness could quickly take away our health. Life itself is a very uncertain thing. No one of us can tell with any degree of certainty whether or not we will even be alive tomorrow. In 1912, the gigantic ocean liner Titanic was built, and of course it was called unsinkable. But we all know how that story ends. So the question we may be having is, can anything be certain? And especially, can anything be certain in the area of our faith? Is our Christian faith true? Or is it merely a collection of fables and fairy tales which have no basis in fact and, then, and that are not worthy of our serious consideration? Must we be in doubt and in uncertainty about the truth of the Christian faith, or can we be sure? These questions are the reasons I have entitled my sermon, Conquering Doubt. You know, to be in doubt about important things in life, it's a serious disadvantage. To not be sure of something, that is, to doubt, is a terrible problem for any of us. And the author of doubt is Satan. So there can be nothing good about any of it. And Satan wants you and me to daily doubt the truth of our Christian faith. And my friends, when you doubt your faith, you can never be calm, you can never have peace, you can never really feel secure and safe. Your life will be spent in constant uneasiness. On the other hand, how encouraging and inspiring it is for a person who has a certain and strong faith. How reassuring it is to be filled with rock-solid Christian conviction. Our Lord sharply condemns doubt, and he strongly commends faith. In our text to Peter, sinking into the waters of the Sea of Galilee, the Lord said, You of little faith, why do you doubt? We also remember later on to Thomas, who refused to believe in the Lord's resurrection unless he actually saw and touched the risen Redeemer. The Savior said, stop doubting and believe. But whenever Jesus did find a person who had a strong faith, how joyfully did he acclaim and commend that person 
by saying, for example, to the woman of Cana, O woman, great is your faith. Or he said to the centurion about his faith, I tell you the truth, I have not found anyone in Israel with such a great faith. Although our world today is filled with many grave doubts and uncertainties, we as Christians do not need to be in any doubt whatsoever about the truth of our Christian faith. Yes, my friends, we can be certain. We can be sure. We can be sure of all the things that are written in the indelible pages of God's Word. We can be sure about the reality of God. We can be sure about the protection of God in our lives. We can be sure that Jesus is exactly who he said he is, God. We can be sure of the fact that all of our sins have been wiped away by the sacrifice of Jesus on the rugged cross of Calvary. And yes, we can be sure that Christ physically rose from that grave. We can be sure that he is the world's only way of salvation. If we believe in Jesus for all that he claimed to be and all that the Bible says of him, we can all be sure that as we cling to him, we will go to heaven. Every Christian can and should be filled with firm Christian certainty and conviction about the truth of the Christian faith, and I'll tell you why. Because it is the faith which the Bible, the Old and New Testaments, teach clearly. The Bible, that book which has never taught a falsehood, though it has frequently but never successfully been charged with errors and inaccuracies. But we know better. We know that God's word is completely true, that we might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Here is a true and trustworthy witness to the certainty of our faith, and that is the Bible, God's Word. My friends, we can accept what it teaches without doubt and without question. It has stood the test of long ages and of sharp criticism. I find it interesting that in the study of the science of botany, we learn about this certain marine plant that has its roots on the bottom of the ocean, and then its stem goes all the way up to the surface where the leaves float on the surface. The stem of this plant is not more than an inch thick, but it is able to withstand the violent breakers and the waves of the turbulent ocean. We can't help but wonder, how can this little thin plant successfully resist the fury of the ocean when it's in a storm? Well, I'll tell you its secret. The secret is that it anchors itself deep down into the solid bed of the ocean floor. My friends, a person who so bases and builds their faith and their hope upon the solid foundation of the Word of God, they are building their faith upon the rock that cannot move. Jesus Christ himself. 
That is why, in my faith, I have such a firm conviction. It has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with Christ and with the solid foundation of his word. So we ask, how then can we overcome any doubts that may come our way? How do we conquer doubt? The story of scripture, which we are considering today from the gospel, teaches us a fact that we can overcome doubts simply by accepting the word of the Lord in full faith and that we keep our eyes on Jesus. Did you notice that part in today's gospel in our text? Peter stepped out of the boat on the water. And as long as Peter kept his eyes on Jesus, he was fine. But when he glanced around him and he saw the result of the wind and all the waves in the sea around him, his doubts, well, they nearly killed him. But just as Jesus, our Savior, reached out his hand and grabbed Peter, so I ask you to trust Jesus today, to reach out to you, his hand, in his word, through his words, and through our study together of his holy, precious word. My friends, an unwavering acceptance of the word of God, it will dissolve and melt away all of your doubts. It has made the most incredible difference in my life. The Lord assures and convinces and persuades us of the truth of Christianity by means of his holy inerrant word and with the Holy Spirit working through that word in our hearts. As St. Paul wrote, because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit, and with deep conviction. 1 Thessalonians 1.5 You know, in my own personal faith life, I have depended on God's word, and I decided by God's Holy Spirit's grace to base what I believe on that word, to know that it is inerrant, it has no mistakes or errors, and it has shown me each day of my life just how trustworthy it really is. And I pray for each of you as the days become months and as the months become years of your life that you always stand on God's word, that you let nothing sway you from it, that you let no person or idea ever try to misshape the views that are founded on God's word alone. Someone a long time ago asked Samuel Taylor Coleridge, at that time he was a famous British poet, they asked him, is Christianity true? The poet answered that question with two little words, try it. Another individual, a Hindu, who was a convert to Christianity, once said, if I were a missionary, I would not argue the question of religion. I would give people the New Testament and say, read it. You know, if we hear and read the Word of God again and again and again at home, in the privacy of our, of our own thoughts, in Bible class, with other Christians, right here in church, if it will take hold of us, 
with divine power. And yes, it will enable you and me together with the Apostle Paul to say, I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We learn that from God's word in Romans 8. Finally, my friends, if you can say those words with Paul, then you have made the greatest conquest of your life. Do not doubt it, but firmly believe the words that the Lord speaks to you. And then I assure you, you will be able to go about all your daily task with a song in your heart, with a smile on your lips, in the certain knowledge that God is your heavenly Father, your precious Redeemer, and your glorious Comforter. And you know, in this age in which we live, which is filled with so much doubt and uncertainty, it is really wonderful to know that our Lord Jesus is right here beside us, always in his word as we sail through this sea of life. Yes, we can conquer every doubt. Having any doubts? Then get a New Testament and read it. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please rise if you're able as we recite the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for all people in their various needs, for the church around the world, and for those near and dear to us. Our great God laid the foundation of the world let us ask his guidance and protection for all who tend his good creation, tilling the soil and protecting the environment, for all who connect resources with people in need of food, clothing, and shelter, providing dignity and hope, and for all who work for peace and justice in their positions of authority. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer as we call to you. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. Let us ask the Holy Spirit's strength and encouragement for all who proclaim the gospel in pulpits and hospitals, on battlefields and in refugee camps, offering the salvation that the word of Christ announces, for all who put their faith into action, teaching the young, consoling the ill, comforting the grieving, and listening to the distraught and for those near and dear to us, and those known only to our gracious God. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer as we call to you. Jesus said, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Let us ask our Savior's gracious presence and protection for people of faith around the world, enduring persecution and standing with the weak for the church in our land, confronting injustice and resisting indifference 
wherever they are found, and for ourselves, gathering around word and sacrament and responding to the gospel in word and deed. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer as we call to you. In our special prayers today, for our sick and afflicted members of Zion and friends of Zion, Lord, we give thanks that Glenn Goble is doing well after a procedure on Thursday, that Jerry Nixon was able to return home from the hospital, Earl and Irene Meyer doing better after having ill health, Susan Jacobs after cataract surgery, for Barbara Gray this morning with us recovering from a procedure, for a friend of Kathy Williams after successful surgery on August 19th, and Gary Wolford after successful surgery, and the friend of Kesman Reister now at home after a kidney transplant. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to be with each of these and provide them with comfort during their recovery. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for your mercy and healing touch for Noah Harris after emergency surgery, for the sister-in-law of Elaine Bircher suffering with leukemia and doing poorly in her husband with Parkinson's disease. For Janelle Hare's son, Dan, in the hospital with heart issues. And also for Ellen, the sister of Earl Meyer, recovering after hip surgery, and her husband also suffering in poor health. If it be your will, Lord, grant them healing and comfort. Lord, in your mercy. Be with the family and friends of the cousin of Ruth Norris, who recently passed away. Provide them with comfort during this time of grief over their loss. Lord, in your mercy. These and any other things you would have us ask of you, gracious God, grant to us for the sake of the sufferings and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God in the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with us all. Amen.